I watch many channels and I understand that it is challenging to, in my opinion, I, I've been watching videos about people retiring at my age from good jobs and why they, why they made the decision to retire and most of them were forced retirements. That's a whole nother topic, a whole nother video, but I've been watching those. And I've also been watching, analyzing, I guess, because I've been in their shoes. And I will upload, I've been in their shoes, gig workers going live, talking while they're in the field. I used to do that a lot. For like the, one, the first year, YouTube had lives, I got into it. And there's many reasons why I turned off my comments. I did not forget about uploading that video, about why I, I'm, it's gonna be a good video. When it happens, it happens. When it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I watch a lot of channels and it's, the gig world can be isolating. You're not a part of a community, part of a team. You don't become a part of a crew. This is your connection. You share, you upload videos sharing what's going on in your market, how your daily routine goes. You're sharing your highs and lows of the industry that you're in. You're in the field, you're doing it. This is your banter. It's different. It's different because you're not face to face. You're not making true connections that for most people, at least one or two people, you make a friend with and that friend can turn into a lifelong, a lifelong friend. We talk into cameras, we share what's going out, what's going on in the field. You know, we are a part of a community. Some people even go live and go live as a group and interview people, but it's not the same. In my opinion, it's not the same. It's isolating and it's not for everyone. Um, I have been a part of a crew over the years, but I'm not gonna lie, I never really felt like I totally fit in. I did what I had to do, but I've been, if you follow me, I've been working on my entrepreneur life I gave up a lot of my life to live a lifestyle that I watch on TV and watch other people live. I mean, just a very high, high end lifestyle. Well, the second half of my life, I deserve it. I'm about a year off, but I know it's coming. I understand gig workers. It's isolating. You go live. You want to talk. I prefer to create videos. That's why I stopped going live too. I actually, once I got over that little bit of, let me go live, you know? For like a year, I went live. It, it saved me. It was my sanity. But there, there came a few things that I never took into, into consideration when I went live. And I learned, you know, old acquaintances, old co co-workers. People filled me in. I experienced some nasty stuff in my lives, even though I would never do that to someone. But there are a lot of warped, unhappy, miserable people out there, <laughs> just the way it is. But I kept my sanity. And the people who helped keep my sanity, I thank you. That's why in my part one of this video, I thank you because I think it's great that people actually find what I share of value and they feel it's worth listening to. It got me through a real tough time. I didn't want to do that. I was doing it because there was a purpose. There was a reason. It was a sacrifice. I was working behind the scenes. It was an opportunity to move ahead as an entrepreneur. So I did it because any job I was going to get, especially after my last job, unless I gave them my life, I wasn't going to get anything.
So I'm a part of this community and I got lucky. It worked. So thank you. So it's very hard for the gig workers to, you know, going live. I, I watched a few people go live today and I didn't say anything. I was just browsing. I had a lot of downtime for me. Today was a tough one. And I'm like, I remember that. That's a struggle because you don't feel like you're a part of a group. You're, you're not, we're connected this way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love the topic. I love following entrepreneurs, gig workers. There's many ways to earn money. It just, I find it a good topic and you know, why people are going through massive changes in their mid fifties and retiring earlier than planned. It's all connected. It's just being isolated is not for everyone. I understand why people get depressed, they get down. I wanted to see, you know, I watch a lot of videos learning about people, they go through that midlife, it's like a midlife crisis, but it's more of, you know, it's a change in life. It's not cut out for everyone. Not everyone can handle it. See, when, uh, in my opinion, the pandemic went down, that's just my opinion, I happen to like it because I already adjusted to being alone more so than usual. This is just a chapter in life because I have not, soon I believe I will find where I'm supposed to be and not living a life worrying about what other people think and I lived very unhappily for a long time because I was so overly concerned about what people would think not following the herd. That's how I feel. I'm not even sorry. That's how I feel. I wanted to branch out and be something different. I know I'm good at, uh, at the time. I was good. I made people a lot of money. They didn't do anything for me. Uh, that's another video. But I, I did watch many channels today and I went, oh God, I remember that feeling. You need someone to banter. You're going live. You're, just, you're sharing your idle time, your idle time. And they're great people. And I understand what they're going through because I went through it. Now I leveled up. I adjusted. I leveled up. I like it. Um, I like making videos. I know how to do it on the fly. I worked on this video. Now I'm home. Oh, I only earned $166 and I'm waiting for two more tips. 10 hours I was out for the day and I completed two errands for myself, but I had a lot of downtime and I did. You know, I had a half an hour here, 20 minutes there, half an hour there. I didn't, the, the, the offers were not coming in, Uber and Grubhub during the day and they were shit. So now I forced myself to come home because now it was starting to get busy. I, I ran in to get a little more food to a store, a local store, and the thing was buzzing. And I was like, I'm done, I'm done. I did my scheduled deliveries. So I guess I babbled a little bit, but that's good. That's good. I will upload that video one day. You gig workers who are, I mean, it's about isolation. It's not cut out for everyone. Not everyone can go it alone and make it alone. They need someone to lean on. They need a community. They need that structure. They need that not so, not so nine to five, but maybe 10 to four, 12 to seven, three to 11. You know what I mean? Overnight. Some people, they live and thrive for that. That's their way of life. They couldn't make it without that structure and that routine and always being around people. I feel like being around people is overrated at this point. I, that's just me. But it took me a long time to get here. And I actually really like the freedom that I have, but I still have to work. And I'm still going about my business. Okay, I babbled. It's a long, now this video is long. I'm going to cut it short. I try to wrap it up all in once. I don't want to do it again. So you gig workers, I'm with you. I know what you're going through. Good thing for this. Because it can get a little nutty, but I've never, I never, I never, I guess, picked on someone on their lives and try to put them down. And I've, I'm not envious and I'm not jealous of other people. I don't look at anybody and go, you know, 
I, I, I just, I just don't get like that, but many people do. And I went through that and I will be, I will be sharing that on a video. So much to share, but it's just not enough time, you know? So you gig workers going live, doing your thing. I find you entertaining. I happen to relate, hang in there. Something will give and the, the gig, the gig community, the gig economy, I guess economy is changing. I have two scheduled deliveries tomorrow. I'm going to earn a hundred bucks and I'm working it. Oh, I forgot to show you that the video is so long. I'll see you later. Bye everybody. Two things. At least I know for the rest of my life, I have purpose and meaning. I have passions. I wake up. I don't think I might have a odd day, but I don't. Years ago, I used to be like, oh, I'm so bored. I need to be around people all the time. It's the only way I can live. I'm so glad I'm over that. I just, there's something to always do. It's, it's, it's all a mindset. That's all it is. You can be anywhere, you're gonna be happy. If you're happy, you're happy. That's life experience. I used to think I would be happy as someplace else. I this, I that, nope, 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 nope. Once you find purpose, meaning, passion, you know, a zeal for life. <laughs> That's something I never had. Again, check your environment. Number two, this might piss someone off. I don't care. Only once I put down someone on a video. And it's because his head was bubbling and I felt he was being cocky. And it's because he was playing with his wife on the camera and I called him out you know his head got big he even ran off of YouTube too <laughs> I just sorry but that's so funny and that person actually said all you had to do was reach out to me and I did told him how I felt and his reply was I will not change for anyone but he put on a good show on his videos <laughs> Only once, so I lied, but I caught my lie. Now I'm telling you the truth, only once, because it was inappropriate and his head was bubbling and he was such cocky and it was making me sick. <laughs> he could have been anyone else, I would have felt the same way. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Purpose, meaning, passion, zeal for life. It's the only way to be. The future is bright. I know why he turned me off. It's because during his show, someone called in and made that show what it was. The caller, the viewer that called in was offering, was making him shine. And he was looking his wife up and down on the video. And it just disgusted me, the lack of respect that he gave to this viewer that called in and made the show. Meanwhile, you know, he said one thing, you should have wrote me, I did. And you said, I'm not changing for anybody. That's the, I, I still got the emails or the Facebook. I, I could look it up. I'm sure I could find it. It wasn't like I hit it. And that really bothered me for a long time. I said, well, there's a lot of weird people out there. You know, he likes it when his head's all bubbled up. I didn't run off of YouTube. Not everybody likes me. All I have to care about is that Google likes me. They're the only ones that would matter. They could knock me off. So I found it even more amusing when he just disappeared. It was like, you know, I've had people, like I said, put me down on lives. Made me feel kind of shitty. But did I run off of YouTube? No, not at all. See you in the next video clip.